Hello and welcome to the Natural PCOS podcast, the podcast dedicated to empowering women with polycystic ovarian syndrome through natural approaches. I'm your host, Dr. Samina Mitha, a naturopathic doctor with a passion for women's health and hormones. Each episode, I'll explore the latest insights and my personal experience to help you manage your PCOS naturally. Together, we'll dive into practical tips, inspiring stories, and the latest research to support your journey towards balance and wellness. Let's get started on your path to thriving with PCOS naturally. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Natural PCOS Podcast. Today, we're all we're talking all about weight management and PCOS and in terms of supplements that I think are really beneficial in terms of the research. I really sat with this topic. Um, I actually asked my audience on Instagram what would be the next topic for the podcast, and this one was one that really came up. And I think it's such an interesting topic that I'm going to dive into a lot into detail. Um, but also, I actually looked at the studies a little bit in detail again. Um, just to see if there's anything I was missing. And there was actually a few things that I think I'm going to actually start implementing with some of the women that I work with. So I can't wait to share this with you in this podcast today. When it comes to insulin resistance and PCOS, this is probably the number one cause of weight gain when we look at PCOS. As we all know, you know, supplements are not the quick fix or the fix at all, in my opinion, when it comes to weight management and PCOS. We can say, hey, take this and you're gonna your BMI is gonna change or take this supplement and you're gonna lose 10 pounds or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's so multifactorial when it comes to weight management and PCOS. It's not just about supplements. It's about the bigger picture. But today what I'm gonna go into are the details on some of the supplements that we know of that can be really beneficial, that can really help supplement a plan that's already put in place in terms of managing diet, sleep, stress, and also just, you know, energy and overall well-being. So again, first things first is insulin resistance. And when we talk about insulin resistance, you know, I've explained this before in another episode, um, but really insulin resistance is when that glucose cannot get inside the cell where it needs to be. Now we have higher levels of blood sugar, and this can be detrimental to the body. And so we have a lot of different nutraceuticals, um, herbs that we have seen that can be really helpful when it comes to insulin resistance. Number one is inositol, probably my ultimate favorite supplement when it comes to PCOS. Lots of research on this one comparing to metformin, um, using it by itself. Uh, Typically, what we see is what it does is it helps to sensitize the cells to insulin. It really helps to transport that glucose across the membrane to get inside the cell. And really, really helpful for other things like egg quality, reducing testosterone, supporting healthy ovulation in women with PCOS, and also helpful with cravings, which I know can be super tough when it comes to BCOS, having it myself. So inositol, four grams a day um, in divided doses is what's been seen in the study. So two grams in the morning, two grams in the evening. If you forget that second dose, you want to take it in your water bottle, sip it throughout the day so that you can actually get that managing the blood sugar throughout the whole day. Next is berberine. So berberine really helpful has been studied um, as well. What it's really doing is supporting and working on the gut microflora um, and what it it's actually traditionally a Chinese medicine herb and what they've actually found that it can really help insulin, blood sugar, it can reduce HbA1c. This is a marker of uh, glucose over the last three months. It can also lower cholesterol and it can help with lowering triglycerides in that cholesterol panel and also really helpful for cystic acne. Um, I've used it many times in the case of cystic acne and I've seen it work really well. I really only reserve berberine for somebody who has pretty intense insulin resistance. They need some extra support. Maybe they've tried inositol, maybe they've tried metformin. Nothing's really moving the needle for them. So that's where berberine kind of comes in, especially if the insulin is greater than 100. 
on Lambert. This is in Canadian units, so I'd have to go double check the units. But basically, if it's above 100, then yeah, I'm thinking maybe berberine can really help this patient um, bring that insulin level down. Next is omega-3. So omega-3, you know, everyone thinks like, this is, is this actually going to work? And it really does help insulin resistance. It helps lower inflammation. It helps that cholesterol panel. It helps a lot of different functions in the body, mood, immune system. So, you know, taking an omega-3 fish oil is not a bad idea, especially if there's inflammation present as well, which we do often find when insulin resistance is there. Another one is magnesium. So there's so much information on magnesium. Which one should I take? What's the dose? It really depends on the person. There's different types of magnesium. So you really want to talk to somebody like a healthcare provider in your case, figuring out which magnesium is best for you. Generally speaking, a magnesium bisglycinate is really great for the nervous system if someone's having trouble sleeping or has stress. Uh, magnesium citrate is better for somebody who has constipation. Vitamin D is probably hands down the number one supplement every woman with PCOS should be taking. And I would go as far as saying any woman and any person should be taking. Get your levels tested. It's really an individualized prescription when it comes to vitamin D because it really depends on what your levels are at. Vitamin D, actually, receptors have been found in the reproductive system. So we know it really helps hormones. I had a case the other day of a thyroid case and Literally, we just tested her vitamin D. She was like, okay, Samina, I don't feel well. My energy is super low. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I could sleep all day. And so we tested her vitamin D and she changed it. She came back or changed the dose, came back. We changed a few other things. We added um, ashwagandha to her supplement plan and uh, we kept the dose of her natural desiccated thyroid the same. And she came back and she's like, I feel so much better. And it's definitely the vitamin D. And it's so true. Like sometimes if you're so tired and you have a vitamin D deficiency, this is the cause. It's not just iron or B12. It's usually vitamin D. That's a really big issue. Um, and it's actually been shown to be helpful in um, insulin resistance as well. So I would get your levels tested and make sure you're on an appropriate dose. So the other one is L-carnitine. And so what we know about L-carnitine is that it can actually help with fatty acid oxidation, and it also can reduce triglycerides in the liver. Now, I've never really used L-carnitine, but I've seen it being talked about a lot um, on the internet and on social media. So I went and really looked at the research. Like, is this actually working for women with PCOS and insulin resistance? And so typically, they've studied different types of dosages, and it seems to be that a higher dose of L-carnitine works better, so about that three gram mark. And what another study had said was that it really has low to moderate certainty of uh, really supporting insulin resistance. So when I'm thinking of L-carnitine, um, it's probably not the number one thing I'm really thinking about, but maybe it could help in a case where there is some triglyceride issue. So I think it can really help when it there is some fatty liver present, um, and I would probably keep it for a case like that. But it wouldn't be in my number one. Another one that I have been using over the last few years is alpha lipoic acid. This has been studied to reduce HbA1c. Um, HbA1c is our screening for diabetes, and basically it can help to really support as an antioxidant. Um, and we have seen that it can reduce glucose and HbA1c in the bloodstream. Another one that I literally have started looking into yesterday was cinnamon. This is one I really haven't used in my practice, but I might actually start incorporating this a little bit more. There's actually quite a bit of information on how cinnamon can lower blood sugar. And I've known this um, forever, but Really, I wanted to know, could it actually help with insulin resistance? And what the studies actually say that 1.5 milligrams actually reduced insulin resistance and LDL or cholesterol. And actually a few meta-analysis, which basically means that they're looking at different studies and they're compiling their opinion based on all the studies that have been done on this specific topic. So really interesting cinnamon, I think, can be helpful here. Now, you might be asking, can I just add cinnamon to my diet over top of everything and will it help? It will help 
just a slight amount in terms of lowering blood sugar, but it won't help significantly. I think you really need to take a supplement to see a change here. Okay, so when it comes to PCOS, it's not just about insulin resistance in terms of weight management. We really want to look into the thyroid. So in terms of the thyroid, supplements that can be really helpful, again, vitamin D, omega-3, um, and also N-acetylcysteine. This isn't one I talked about in the insulin resistance section, but it really, N-acetylcysteine can really help women with PCOS. It was initially studied for bronchitis, but recently has been studied for reproductive issues, especially PCOS. And what they've seen is this antioxidant that's probably the most important antioxidant for the liver can really help reproductive conditions and also thyroid health as well. So in terms of the thyroid, N-acetylcysteine can be helpful. Selenium is also a really important one. 200 micrograms of selenomethanone um, and also inositol have been studied over a six-month period, and it has been shown to lower thyroid antibodies, uh, which we see in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, which can also cause weight gain and, and then also eventually cause hypothyroidism. So really helpful in a case of that. And then also ashwagandha. This is probably one of the most powerful adrenal supplements, or I should say botanical herbs that we have that can really help to balance cortisol. There is some um, information out there saying that ashwagandha actually increases testosterone, and I've never seen this happen. I really don't think um, it does this when it comes to PCOS, so it, it can be safe to say that we can use it. Uh, what I have seen in the research is 600 milligrams twice a day has been really helpful for women who have hypothyroidism and want to lower that TSH. Thyroid cases are really important, especially if you're trying to conceive. So if you're trying to lose weight because you're trying to conceive, really make sure that you've had a full investigation on your thyroid. TSH, free T3, free T4, anti-TPO, and anti-TG need to be tested when it comes to the thyroid. Okay, last but not least is your adrenals and your sleep. This is probably the number one thing when it comes to um, treating weight management is a lot of people don't feel like they're stressed, but they're actually really stressed and this is impacting their metabolism. We all work really intense roles and jobs and sometimes we miss the fact that our body is actually stressed and we do need to calm our nervous system down as much as we can. What I have found that when a patient really focuses on their stress, they get to bed on time. So really making sure you get to bed by 11 can be really supportive to those adrenal glands. And making stress a priority can make a huge difference, especially if you feel like you're stuck and you just can't get the weight to move any further to your goal. So what can you do in terms of supplements? The number one thing I use often is L-theanine. This comes from green tea. Um, and this compound really helps to calm the nervous system down. What it, what I think of it as is like if you have monkey brain, you're ruminating, you're thinking, you're planning, and it's kind of all over the place, L-theanine is for you. If you're having troubles falling asleep, L-theanine can be really, really supportive here as well. Um, another thing is B-complex. Um, this is such an important vitamin, all the B vitamins, um, especially if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling stressed, if you're having trouble sleeping. B-complex can really help, especially because it's used in so many different chemical reactions in the body. I'm going to bring it back to magnesium. So magnesium bisglycinate, I mentioned that at the beginning, really helpful for stress and the adrenals and then also for sleep. And then your vitamin D, because it can really help in terms of mood and also anxiety. Um, such a powerful vitamin that everyone needs to be considering. And then last but not least is herbal formula. So this really depends on where you're at in terms of what your stress and anxiety look like and what your sleep looks like. If you're really anxious all the time, we want to be choosing herbs like passion flower, lemon balm, catnip, lavender. Um, if it's more like stress, fatigue, burnout, you're waking up and you're like, oh my God, I could sleep for another three hours. And you're like really dragging yourself throughout the day. Maybe it is an iron issue or a thyroid issue, but if it's your adrenals, Something like a leuthrococcus can be really helpful here. And then if you're, you know, kind of constantly stressed throughout the day and you need something more 
stabilizing, but you still have a little bit of energy, but you know you are stressed, something like an ashwagandha can be really helpful here. Um, so I hope I was able to really explain all the supplements that I've commonly used when it comes to weight management and PCOS. There isn't just like, you know, you should take these five things because everyone can benefit from this. It really is an individualized approach. That's why, you know, just listing off a few supplements won't do the trick. But I hope this kind of gives you an idea of what the research says and what can be really helpful when it comes to PCOS. But if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Natural PCOS Podcast. I hope you found today's episode insightful and empowering. Remember, managing PCOS is a journey and you're not alone. For resources, tips, and to connect with our community, visit my website at saminamitha.com. You can also find me on Instagram at dr.saminamitha.nd. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Your feedback helps me to reach more women seeking support for PCOS. Until next time, take care and stay well.